friends. I'm Christopher Graham and I serve here as a senior pastor at Mount Zion Woodline. We are a church where we're Bible-based, Christ-centered, a mission-minded, and a discipleship-driven church. Whether you're here in the sanctuary or watching home online, we hope and pray that you have an awesome, awesome worship experience. Again, welcome, and we hope that you have a great time here at the Mount. Come worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I am excited to inform you that effective immediately, Mount Zion Baptist Church will begin a policy where masks are optional. Our worship during the pandemic has changed, and we praise God that as a country, we appear to be moving towards becoming an endemic. Therefore, we will be utilizing the modified policy set by the CDC. There are a few requirements that I need to share with you. First, if you are more comfortable wearing a mask, please continue to wear your mask. If you're not feeling well, please remain at home. You can watch us on Facebook, YouTube, or dial in. Tides and offering will continue to be collected as you are entering and are leaving the church. If you do not have envelopes, there will be envelopes available in the vestibule as well as in the back of the pews. Please feel free to fellowship with each other. Now, if you happen to test positive for COVID, please call the church so we can assist with contact tracing. Church, with God's help, we can remain open without mask. We're looking forward to seeing your smiling faces again. We're located at 10180 Woodlawn Boulevard in beautiful Woodlawn, where the pastor is the Reverend Christopher R. Graham. Welcome to Reverend Keith D. Turner Jr., the guest preacher for this morning. A special church meeting will be held on May 9th at 7 p.m. That's when members will be able to vote on who they want to serve on the Deacon Selection Committee. Mark your calendar. Remember, Sunday, May 14th is Mother's Day. May 20th from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m., you can bring your documents to the Shred event. Thanks to the senior ushers of Mount Zion, the annual salad hour will be held on May 21st, right after the morning service. That's May 21st. Four salads of your choice. Vacation Bible School is coming up. A Vacation Bible School meeting is set for May 16th at 6.30 p.m. here at Mount Zion. Vacation Bible School is June 19th through June 22nd. The theme is Leading Out Loud, and there will be classes for children, teens, and adults. May 20th is Volunteer Day at Matthew 25 Ministries from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. You can volunteer every month at Matthew 25. Several members have birthdays this month. Please say happy birthday to Delinda Patton, May 4th. Diane Favors, her birthday is May 6th. Also coming up in May, a birthday celebration for Gwen Jubilee Womack on May 10th. Happy birthday to her. Also to Reverend Pat Stone. Her birthday is May 17th. And Kenneth Roberts has a birthday on May 30th. Happy birthday. Pastor Graham's preaching schedule for May he will be preaching May 14th, May 21st, and May 28th. This is just a friendly reminder, food and drink are not allowed in the sanctuary. Do you have family members, deceased family members, who served in the military? If so, as part of a Memorial Day service, the military ministry would like you to send their name to the office. 
a free three-day summer camp, that's free, will be held this summer at Camp Kirkwood. It's sponsored by the American Baptist Churches of Ohio. If you'd like more information, email the email address on the screen or call the church office. I'm Christopher Graham and I serve here as a senior pastor at Mount Zion Woodline. We are a church where we're Bible-based, Christ-centered, a mission-minded, and a discipleship-driven church. Whether you're here in the sanctuary or watching home online, we hope and pray that you have an awesome, awesome worship experience. Again, welcome and we hope that you have a great time here at the Mount. worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I am excited to inform you that effective immediately, Mount Zion Baptist Church will begin a policy where masks are optional. Our worship during the pandemic has changed and we praise God that as a country, we appear to be moving towards becoming an endemic. Therefore, we will be utilizing the modified policy set by the CDC. There are a few requirements that I need to share with you. First, if you... Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. It's Sunday morning. And we are excited to give God praise in the house. Those of you that are on YouTube, Facebook, conference call, we greet you in Jesus' name. And we declare whatever happens here in the sanctuary that you be giving God praise wherever you are. Those that are in the sanctuary, God bless you, you and especially you. Come on, let's stand to our feet, which is our posture of worship. That's how we do it here at Mount Zion. We give God a praise. We magnify him and we exalt him for who he is. Come on, put those hands together, everybody. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, you know this song. Sing it good.
in the heavens.
on glorify him. Come on glorify him. Hallelujah. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Let the house sing, everybody sing. Here I am to worship. Let the whole house say, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say, I want to tell you that you're my God. You're all together. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to. Come on, sing it from your belly. Here I am. I stand here, I want to worship, here I am, I'll bow at the altar, here I am to say, I declare that you're my, you are my God, and because you're all together, hallelujah, all together worthy, all together one.
Come on, all hands lifted. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am. Here I am to say that you're my God. My God. You're all together. You're all together. Come on, let's do it together. All together worthy. You're all together wonderful to me. Here I am. Here I am to worship. Yes, God. Yes, God. No one else deserves to pray. I'll bow at your feet. Here I am to say, You're Jehovah Jireh. You're Jehovah Rock, Jehovah Shikanu. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Come on, and what's the word of agreement? Oh, and we say yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Lord. We say yes. And we say yes. That's the word of agreement we'll say. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Lord. So oh, here I am to worship, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all, you're all together, let the whole house say, all together worthy, all together, all together wonderful to me. Hallelujah. We have today to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. All we have come to worship Him because we know that He is all together love. Please stand as we have our call to worship. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Let us pray. Lord God, we have come today to lift up your holy name. Lord, as we come, we pray that your Holy Spirit will abide with us. Lord, allow your Holy Spirit to take control of this service. We're asking that you will be with our preacher today. Lord, give him a word from on high, and then give your people ears to hear and hearts to understand. Lord, be with those that will be singing the songs of Zion. Let them sing as if you were standing right there in front of them. Now, Lord, we ask that you will be with this waiting congregation today. Now, Lord, we want you to know that we love you. We praise you. Lord, we lift your name on high. Whatever you do, don't take your Holy Spirit away from us. These and other blessings we ask in the precious name of Jesus. And the people of God said, amen. You may be seated. 
I want to take this opportunity to welcome those of you that have braved the weather today. Do we have any visitors that are visiting with us today? If so, would you Amen. please stand? Amen. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> we want you to know that today you are indeed welcome to praise God in whatever manner you have become accustomed. We do not judge here. We have come to praise our God. Thank you so much for worshiping with us amen, today. Amen. I also want to welcome our Facebook, YouTube, and Dial In family and friends, because we don't take it for granted that you're worshiping with us today. We know that you could have tuned in to any church throughout this nation, but God directed your path to worship with us located at 10180 Woodline Boulevard in beautiful Woodline, Ohio. So we say welcome and praise God even in your home. Mount Zion, it is time for us to get fit. You know what we do here. We take out our phones, we take pictures, and we post them on Facebook or whatever social media you participate in. Use the hashtag, meet me at the mount. Amen. I do have a couple of announcements. The nominating committee was, was soliciting nominations from the congregation for individuals to fill three positions on the trustee ministry. You should have gotten your form from the vestibule as they were, uh, your candidate's name should have been submitted by Thursday. That was May 4th, so hopefully everyone uh, picked up their ballots and submitted names to be considered. This Tuesday, we are having a special call meeting to vote for the two at-large members to serve on the deacon selection team. This meeting will be Tuesday, May 9th at 7 p.m., and it will be in person. So we're hoping to see your smiling faces here in this very room. And you know that we are running a little short on deacons, uh, so we're asking that you please come out because we really do need some extra deacons. Men, your choir rehearsal is going to be on Thursday, May 11th Amen. at 7 p.m. The men will be singing for Mother's Amen. Day. Amen. And we want you all to please practice so that you can <laughs> serenade the mothers. Thank you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> all right. Uh, if you're able, you can stand for our morning hymn. An old familiar hymn of the church. Amen, amen. I want to undermine that, brothers. We need to see you on Thursday at 7 o'clock. Amen. Glory to his name. Come on, let's sing this old familiar song. Come on. Oh, let us say. 
this time we will have our altar call. If you would like to come to the altar, we invite you to come now. Or if you prefer to stand at your seat, please feel free to do so. This is the time for us to have just a little talk with Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a time for us to tell him what's on our minds. And then it's a time for us to listen to him. this morning, Lord, we come acknowledging that we haven't always done what you told us to do. Lord, we acknowledge that sometimes we have gone astray. But Lord, we acknowledge that we are in need of your grace and your mercy. And so, Lord, as we gather around this altar, we come laying ourselves at your feet. Lord, we come asking that you will just examine us. And then, Lord, when you find those things lurking around our hearts that shouldn't be there, we pray that you will remove them from us as far as the east is from the west. And then restore unto us the joy of your salvation. Lord, as we come this morning, some of us are not feeling a hundred percent. But Lord, we know that you are a doctor that's never ever lost a patient. So we're asking this morning that you will allow us to touch the hem of your garment. Lord, we're coming, lifting up your servant, Reverend Herb, to you this morning. Lord, he's going to be having surgery on tomorrow. But we thank you that you're already in that operating room. Lord, you're going to be there waiting for him, directing the hands of the surgeon. So we thank you in advance, Lord. We thank you that he's going to come through just fine. Lord, there are some that have been in the hospital. Lord, we ask that you will continue to heal their bodies. Now, Lord, there may be some that are going through the valley of the shadow of death. We pray that you will come with them as only you can. Lord, we lift up the people from Allen, Texas. Lord, they were just trying to do a little shopping. And yet somebody had evil on their minds. So, Lord, we're praying for their families this morning. We are praying for this nation this morning. Lord, we are praying that all of our Congress people will be moved to do something about guns in this nation. Lord, help them to understand that these guns are not meant for our good. Help them to understand that money is not the answer to everything. Lord, help them to begin to put people ahead of guns and the people ahead of money. Oh Lord, if you don't help us this morning, we don't know who will. So we're just asking right now 
that you will hear our humble cry. Lord, say, come down. Come down to your people. Help us to do things that we ought to be doing. And then, Lord, we pray that you will help your church to be a shining light in this dark world. Lord, help us to let our light so shine that men, women, boys, and girls will come running saying, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved? Now, Lord, I'm going to pause so that my brothers and sisters can call out the names of others that are on their heart this morning. Lord, we ask that you hear our prayer. We love you, we praise you, and we lift your name on high. Be with your people and don't ever leave us. These and other blessings we ask in the precious name of Jesus. And the people of God said, Amen. And amen. with us, I want to take a moment to introduce our speaker for today. He is no stranger here at Mount Zion. Energetic, passionate, follower of Christ, husband and father, all describe Reverend Keith Turner, Jr. He's a native of Cincinnati, Ohio. He graduated with a bachelor's degree of science in journalism from Ohio University in Athens. <laughs> Reverend Turner is a second generation preacher who accepted his call into ministry in 2011 at the age of 19. He was ordained in July of 2019 at Peace Baptist Church. In his 11 years of ministry experience, he has served in college ministry, preached in numerous states across the US, and has served as a creative coordinator of online content for Sanctuary Columbus Church in Columbus, Ohio. He currently serves as assistant pastor at Consolation Baptist Church. Outside of ministry, he works for Apple Incorporated and has passions in areas of family, sports, and technology. His mission is to inspire people all around the world to live a purpose-driven life. After this next selection, the next voice you hear will be that of the Lord speaking through none other than Reverend Keith Turner, Jr. Amen.
serve a wonderful God. Would you put your hands together and help me celebrate it? Amen. Amen. Mount Zion, it's always good to be with all of you today. Um, first of all, I want to give honor to Pastor Graham in his absence. Uh, church, it is imperative and necessary for your pastor to be able to get away, amen, and not have to worry about us, amen, amen. So we thank God that he was able to go to the uh, leadership conference at ILS and just have a little time away, uh, but I still thank God for our friendship that has been growing as he's been here in the city. And I'm thankful for uh, his heart and his passion to continue to help serve this church. Would you help me thank God for your pastor today? <clears throat> Amen. And to uh, my buddy, Pastor Stone, I thank you so much uh, for everything that you have done. Uh, church, it was necessary for Pastor Stone to help you through the transition. And how many of you know she did a tremendous job ushering in your new pastor, we thank you, Pastor Stone. We honor you today uh, for all the work that it is that you did. 
And to all of you, uh, some of my friends and my buddies in the sound booth, it's good to see all of you. Uh, and to friends and family, I have my wife and my mom, my daughter, my sister, her boyfriend. Listen, her boyfriend is a Steelers fan. Don't hold it against them. It's all good. We'll still love them because we in church. But would y'all stand real quick just, to, just so everyone can see my family. Amen. If nobody else talks back to me, my daughter will sure enough talk back to me. So it's all good. Amen. Uh, there is a word from the Lord this morning. You all ready for the word today? All right. If you all would stand with me and turn with me to the very first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. Brother Kevin, it's good to see you. Music ministry, thank you all so much. Brother Livers, good to see you, sir. Congratulations on being newly married. Amen. Amen. The first book of the Bible is Genesis, and we're going to look at chapter 39. We're only going to look at one verse, verse number 21. If you have difficulty finding Genesis, we'll pray for you. Uh, it is the first book of the Bible. Amen. Genesis chapter 39, verse number 21. You found it, you will see it reads like this. But the Lord was with Joseph. That's enough. You may be seated. But the Lord was with Joseph. For a few moments, Pastor Stone, I want to preach from this thought, a life-changing predicament. A life changing predicament pray with me would you god we thank you for your presence in this place now god as i stand behind this sacred desk god i pray that your people will not just see keith turner jr but they will hear a word from you god speak to your people we need a word from you have your way god now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, may they be acceptable in your sight. For, O oh Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said together, amen. A life-changing predicament. In the spinoff to a very popular TV series, Grey's Anatomy, Many of you know the show Private Practice. Private Practice was a spinoff of Grey's Anatomy that's still happening. Many people think it ought to be done by now, but they keep creating episodes year after year. And in a very particular episode of Private Practice, I was shook when I saw one of the main characters. Her name is Dr. Violet Turner. Dr. Violet Turner, in this particular episode, found herself in a life-changing predicament. She was pregnant and nearing the time for her to deliver. She was a counselor. She was a mental health specialist, and she was helping a woman through some difficulties that she was facing after she lost her own baby. Uh, this woman has mental illness, I did say that, and this woman goes so far to meet Dr. Violet Turner at her home, sedate her with some type of medication, while Dr. Turner is laying on the floor pregnant, this woman with a mental illness begins to cut the baby out of Dr. Violet Turner. Dr. Turner was in a life changing predicament. She was laying on the floor of her home. She could not move. She could not get herself out of the predicament. She was stuck in a predicament. It was one that she did not deserve, yet she was on the floor of her home, stuck in a predicament 
she didn't deserve. And ladies and gentlemen, while it is that that may not be your story, the truth is, is that often all of us can testify we found ourselves in some predicaments, seasons where life is just difficult. It's hard. It's a struggle to wake up each day and continue to be faced with the same problem. It's a predicament to go into the grocery store and see how high food prices are. It's a predicament for us as black people to live in America when we can't even say black lives matter without people getting offended and thinking that we're saying all lives don't matter. No, don't get it twisted. When we say black lives matter, we're not suggesting that all lives don't matter. We're just saying that for too long in America, black lives haven't mattered enough. We're in a predicament. And some predicaments, church, they can't be avoided. God won't keep you from all of them. And the truth is, you're either in one now, you just came out of one, or one is knocking on your door. But let me give you some theology of predicaments. Because not every predicament is made the same. There are some predicaments that we will face, hear this, that are a result of sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this will not be a popular point of the message. Hit me on the next one. But here it is. Sin still has consequences. No matter how good God is, how gracious he is, how merciful he is, at the end of the day, sin still has consequences that oftentimes, hear this, he may forgive us for some of this stuff, for all of this stuff, but it may, may put us in some predicaments because we decided to blatantly disobey God. Do you remember Jonah? Jonah had a word from God. God, and Jonah decided, I don't want to do what God called me to. So he went and found a boat, got in the boat, but the boat got wavy. The boat started rocking because he was found in disobedience. The manner that was on the boat, they threw him overboard and he found himself in the, in the body of a great fish because he was in a predicament that sin put him in. Hear me, but not every predicament is a result of sin. There's other predicaments that are literally an attack of the enemy. You remember Job? Uh, Job wanted to destroy, I mean, Satan wanted to destroy Job, uh, but, uh, but Satan told God, but you've got this hedge around him. And some of us ought to be thankful for that hedge that has been around us, that God was then protecting us from some stuff, but God allows him to be toe up from the flow up. It was a predicament that he was in, not necessarily because he did something wrong, but because the enemy was after him. But hear this, but there's other predicaments, and this is where I want to hang out today in our text. Some predicaments that we'll find ourselves in as a result of brokenness. Because we live in a fallen world. That, that, that Satan is the God, little g, of this world, that he's seeking whom he may devour. Satan is walking around trying to take you away from the purposes and plans God has for your life. There are some predicaments that we'll be in that's a result of brokenness, racism, evil, wickedness in high places. Things that, that, that happen because they all come from the fall of the garden. And now we're dealing with some predicaments. And the person that we find in the text finds himself in a life-changing predicament. Joseph finds himself stuck in a predicament he didn't deserve to be in. Hear this. Uh, Joseph, when we meet Joseph, uh, his family is out of control. There's a lot of family drama happening. Joseph's family's drama uh, was, was literally like uh, some of what we see on reality TV. So before there was Real Housewives, Love and Hip Hop, Basketball Wives, there was Joseph's family. Joseph's family had some drama. Uh, matter of fact, Joseph's father that had him late in his age, uh, he, he, the Bible says that he loved Joseph a little bit more. His brothers were jealous of Joseph, so much so that they sold him 
him into slavery and lied about it to cover it up. Uh, they sell him into slavery, and that's not even the worst part. While he's in slavery, the Bible teaches us that God is still with him. While he's in slavery, he begins to serve a man by the name Potiphar. Potiphar is a, he is a leader. He is literally underneath the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. And while Joseph is serving Potiphar, hear this, Potiphar's wife sees how handsome he is, and she decides she wants a piece of Joseph. Listen to this. Uh, she's married. She wants a piece of Joseph. But Joseph's a man of integrity. And he says, listen, I understand that you want me, but it would be sin against God for me to do what you're asking me to do. Hear this. He was a man of integrity, but she's persistent. She doesn't take no for an answer. She comes back up and tries to say, listen, Joseph, everybody's gone. I just want a piece of you. And hear this. He turns her down again, and she proclaims, that he made a pass at her. So like any husband, Potiphar hears the news and knows that he's got something to do because he's got to protect his wife. So he puts Joseph in a prison. That's where we find him in the text. Joseph is found in the text. Hear this, stuck in a predicament he didn't deserve to be in. And I had to ask the text a critical question, Kevin, because if that were me, I would have to be wondering, if only I would have did it, maybe I wouldn't be in this predicament. If only I didn't, if only I lowered my standards, decided, well, the Lord will just forgive me, maybe I wouldn't be stuck in this predicament. But can I preach to a few people who's got some integrity and you're doing it right even when people are doing it wrong? You're not cheating the system. You're being faithful. The Lord wants you to be encouraged by the words of the scripture. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you'll reap if you faint not. Can I preach to a few integral people here? Keep being faithful. Keep being a person of integrity and watch God take care of you he's but what happens when your integrity puts you in a predicament he, he finds himself stuck in a predicament there's a few things I want to share with you about this type of predicament that we find in the text and I'm going to get out of here here's the first thing that blesses me hear this is that our predicaments are not an indication that God is absent. All right, so we find him stuck in a predicament. He can't free himself. Uh, we, we read all of chapter 39 up until verse 21 is telling us about the predicament that he's in. Uh, but something shouts me in verse 21 because it begins with, but the Lord, I couldn't, I couldn't keep reading. I had to pause there because, but you all know is a conjunction, conjunction, junction. What's your function? Hooking up words, phrases, and clauses. Here it is. This word, but is connecting the Lord to his predicaments. Ha, yeah, yeah. And, and I couldn't read any further because when I look back over my life, I have a but the Lord testimony. And many of you have a but the Lord testimony too because you had a negative report from the doctor, but the Lord. You had financial troubles, but the Lord. We had COVID, but the Lord. You were struggling and strung out, but the Lord. You used to get high all the time, but the Lord. Cancer couldn't keep you but the Lord. I'm wondering if I've got any but the Lord testimonies here who you can testify if it had not been for the Lord on my side. I don't know where I would be but the Lord was with Joseph. Here's where we see God's presence in the midst of a predicament. 
Hear this. The Lord's presence is revealed because, first off, he gets, while he's in this predicament, Joseph finds favor with the officials and the wardens in the prison. These are people that could have dealt with him nastily because of what he was accused of. But yet God causes him to find favor while in the midst of a predicament. Not only does he find favor, but scholars would suggest that when the text says that he finds that God grants him mercy, they're suggesting that he finds mercy because, hear this, he's in this predicament, but he could have been dead. Sometimes being in the predicament isn't the worst thing that could have happened. Can, can I remind you of a woman who was caught in adultery in the Gospels? She was caught in adultery, and there were some religious people that wanted to stone her. Listen, her being caught wasn't the worst thing, because while it is these religious leaders tried to stone her, here it is. Jesus said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And while she was caught, hear this, even though she was caught, she ended up being better because she was caught. So being in the predicament, predicament wasn't the worst thing for Joseph because he could have died and can I tell you some of you are living through what would have killed some other people and that's why we ought to be thankful today because do you know how many people we had to bury at the hands of COVID but yet you sitting up here acting like God ain't been good to you Negro please I'm wondering if I've got some people here today who will help me thank God because while you may be in a predicament it, it could have been a whole lot worse. It could have been worse. The Lord was with him. And the Lord's presence doesn't just bring us favor and, and mercy. The Lord's presence will bring us joy. In your presence there's a fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. His presence will bring us a peace that'll surpass all understanding. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. That's Exodus 33. And then the scripture goes on to say, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You can find direction in the presence of God because the Bible says that nevertheless I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and after it receive me the glory. What I'm suggesting is church while it is that you may be in a predicament this is not the time to hang up on God. While you're in it hear this his presence will be with you. God has a way of reminding us that he is with us. So sometimes it's hard to trace him. Sometimes it's hard to hear him. But God wants you to know today he's still with you. The predicament is not an indication that God is absent. Here's the second thing. The predicament doesn't hinder God's providential plan. Your predicament doesn't have to keep you from God's plan for you. So I had to do some text background and do my homework on the text. And I had to read forward to understand what God was intending to do in Joseph's life. Because the truth is, is that life can only be lived forward but understood backwards. You can only live life forward, but there's some times when you look back and say, God, I thank you. You keep looking forward, and then you look back and say, God, you knew you needed to keep me from that Negro. You keep living forward, but you look back and say, God, if I would have caught up with her, I would have been in some mess. You keep living, and you look back on the job God said it wasn't for you, and you find out they closed down because God was keeping you from some stuff. And I bet there's some people who can look back over their life and say, God, I was mad back then, but now I'm thankful for what you kept me from. God, I'm thankful for when you said no. God, I'm thankful for how you made a way, even when I didn't know you were at work. So I had to uncover what God's plan was for Joseph. God's plan, hear this, was for Joseph to interpret Pharaoh's dream 
and to be able to put a plan in place to save Egypt from a coming famine. Not only that, but he would save his whole family in Canaan and aid in giving birth to the nation of Israel. That's what I find out God's plan is. But then I go back, Kevin, to the text. Because how does he get from his predicament to his purpose? And, and, and I'm glad you asked because the text gives us an indication that God's providence, uh, catch this, that his, his predicament couldn't escape God's providence. Hear this. Let's look at how God sets this whole thing up. While he's in prison, God makes it so uh, that Pharaoh will put a chief cupbearer and chief baker in the same prison with him. <clears throat> Hear this. God gives Joseph a gift, a gift of being able to interpret dreams. He sends a cup baker, a, a cup bearer and a, a chief baker to the same prison where Joseph has found favor. Joseph is in charge in looking after this chief cupbearer and the chief baker. Watch this. The chief cupbearer and baker both have a dream. They both have a dream, and they're troubled because they don't have the interpretation. While Joseph is stuck in his predicament, God was working some things out to send them into prison because he knew they, that Joseph would be able to interpret the dream, and they would have to realize that Joseph is gifted. God sets it up so that not only does Joseph reveal the meaning of the dreams, but when the chief cupbearer, uh, he, he says that in three days, the Pharaoh would call the cupbearer and allow him to be restored back into his office. Hear this. Joseph only asks one thing of this cupbearer. When you get back to Pharaoh, remember me. Remember, I was the one who interpreted the dream. I need to be out of this predicament. Tell Pharaoh about me. Hear this. Cupbearer gets back to Pharaoh. Bible says he forgets him. So Joseph is now, not only is he stuck in this predicament, uh, but Pastor Stone, he has to deal with the reality that he's gifted but forgotten. God, help me. And, and, and so he's in prison. They forget him, but God says, it still won't stop my plan. Pharaoh has a dream. God, help me today. Pharaoh has a dream, and he literally, if Pharaoh was here today, uh, he would have burned some sage. He would have had some crystals, had a tarot reading, called the psychic hotline, because he did all of that to try to get the interpretation of his dream, and yet no one could give him the interpretation. God causes the cupbearer that forgot him had to remember him to say, Pharaoh, I met somebody who was in a predicament with me. He was able to give me the interpretation. And what many of you are missing here is that while he was in a predicament, hear this, God sent divine connection because it would be a divine connection that God would use to get Joseph out of his predicament. And what I'm coming to tell some people here today is that we ought to be thankful for the connections God has made in our lives because the truth is we're not where we are just because we've been good just because we've got all the degrees just because we've always done it right but we're here today because of some people God has connected us to that has helped us get to the place we need to be and that's why today we ought to be thanking God for divine hookups because God has hooked us up with some people who have helped get us to the place that we need to be it's a divine connection. Um, many years ago, um, I was working at Best Buy. After college, I was working at Best Buy. And um, there was a manager there who um, I didn't necessarily care for, uh, but, but I've never been a person to just disrespect anybody or whatever. We didn't like any of the same sports teams. You know, we was kind of like rivals or whatever, but uh, he was one of my managers. He leaves Best Buy. I was like, oh, man, good. He's gone. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Listen to this. He leaves, and he goes to work at Apple. It's a company I wouldn't mind working for. 
I hear they have better benefits. I hear they have better pay. And they've got some of the best products in all the world. Amen, somebody. If you don't have an iPhone, I'm going to just keep praying for you. But if you got our Apple products, God, we praise you. Thank you, Lord. Hear this. He goes to Apple. He calls me. Remember, I'm not really close to him. He calls me and says, Keith, I think you would be great to work at Apple. I told him, well, they have a very strenuous interview process. They make you go through four or five interviews just to be able to get to the managers in the store. He says, well, Keith, I know the manager. I know the head manager. He and I are friends. If I put in the word for you, you'll be able to skip through some of these interviews and get right to the place you need to be. And hear this. Today, I'm standing here still working for Apple after eight years because there was a divine connection that I didn't know what God was up to. But God has a way of connecting you to people who will get you to the place you need to be. Have I got any witnesses here today who can tell God, thank you for who you connected me to? Because I wouldn't be where I was if it was just me. But God, you were looking out for me. Joseph is in this predicament. And God is working behind the scenes, orchestrating connections and events to happen that will still bring his plan to pass. So Pharaoh has to call Joseph. Joseph, hear this, leaves this predicament, which helps me understand that predicaments, while they may not be favorable, while you may be in them a little bit longer than you would prefer, hear this, predicaments have to have an expiration date. Hi, and can I speak prophetically into somebody's life this morning? What it is that you've been dealing with, God has an exit strategy already in place. What you've been dealing with and crying yourself to sleep over, God's got an exit plan in store for your predicament. It won't end like this. Hold on, my brothers. Don't give up. Hold on, my sisters. Just look up. There is a master plan in store for you if you just see it through. God's going to really blow your mind. He's going make it worth your time for all your trouble you've been through the blessings double just for you the best is still yet to come have i got anybody here today who's expecting god to do it in your life i gotta go i gotta go i gotta go hear this your predicament is not an indication that god is absent secondly Your predicament, hear this, (laughs) Uh, it does not hinder God's providential plan for your life. And then lastly, God won't waste your predicament. He gets to Pharaoh. Joseph gets to Pharaoh. Pharaoh asks him for the interpretation of his dream. Joseph says something that blesses me. He says, I can't give you the interpretation. But the God that I serve is more than able to give you the, the interpretation. And what help, this helps me understand, hear this, that God can't let your predicament end without him showing who's in control. God, I feel like preaching a little bit here today. He says, now, watch this, now everybody has to see God at work in my life. He gives the interpretation. God divinely gives Joseph strategies for the people in Egypt to be able to survive a common famine. Bible readers, you'll know that there would be seven years of prosperity followed by seven years of famine. God uses Joseph to put a plan in place to save some people. Hear this, he gives the interpretation, he gives the strategy, and now Pharaoh, who used to go to all these different people to get interpretations, he even declares, only God could have done this. 
And I want to tell somebody here today, hear this. Your predicament is just an indication that God is up to something. And God knows how to take your predicament and use it for his glory. And I'm wondering if I've got a few witnesses here this morning who can testify on the other side of your predicament, God was getting glory. On the other side of your negative report, God was getting glory. On the other side of your financial troubles, God was getting glory. Because God can take our predicaments and turn them into a miracle. So as a result, Joseph, who was once stuck in a predicament, he didn't deserve it. He did nothing to be put there. But hear this, while he was in the predicament, I told you in the title of this sermon that it was a life-changing predicament because it changed his status. He was a slave and a prisoner. But on the other side of his predicament, he was promoted to one of the highest places in Egypt. Nothing happened in Egypt without Joseph's knowing. And hear this, Joseph's testimony is in the predicament. Even though I didn't deserve it, it may have lasted longer than I would have preferred. The predicament didn't keep me from God's plan. Watch this. The predicament ushered me into God's plan. It he took some, oh good God almighty see God is a shifter and Joseph began to talk to me and he said Keith God shifted some stuff around for me and I am a witness of Romans 8 28 before Paul ever wrote it because he said Keith go look at what Romans 8 28 says I told Joseph I ain't even have to look because I know and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose God shifted some stuff and turned his predicament into his testimony and hear this watch this here's what I love uh, his brothers who sold him into slavery got back to Egypt during the famine they didn't even recognize Joseph was in an elevated state they saw Joseph and couldn't recognize him hear this after after a few moments Joseph reveals himself to his brothers. And they are concerned because they're the ones that sold him into slavery. And you know what Joseph told them toward the end of Genesis? He said, you meant it for evil, but God worked it out for my good. And I bet there's some people here today who can testify. You've been in some predicament, but God worked it out for your good. You was in some stuff, but God worked it out for your good. You were in trouble, but God worked it out for your good. And and today we ought to be thanking him for what he brought us through. He brought us through some difficulties. He brought us through COVID. He brought us through Trump. And today we're still here as a testament of what eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. Now unto him who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ask for. Hear me. He won't waste your predicaments. What you've been dealing with, he said, it's no time wasted. I'm one of the only ones who can take mess and turn it into a message. I'm one who can take your predicament and turn it into your testimony. And hear me, when Joseph is released from his predicament, no one can get the credit for what God did. Ah, yeah. And, and so, so today, before you get to the place God is going to take you, don't forget, never forget, it was the God who saw you through. It wasn't your mama. It wasn't your daddy. It wasn't your wife. It wasn't your kids. It wasn't your nephews. It wasn't Pookie. It wasn't Ray Ray. It wasn't none of them. There was a God who saw you through. There was a God who made a way out of no way. A God who was a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, a light in the darkness, a God who saw me at my work cleaned me up and turned me into what I am today and today I'm thankful for what he pulled me through 
His song that says, it was you. Lord, it was you pulling me through. When I couldn't pull myself through, you were pulling me through. When I couldn't see my way out of this predicament, God, you were pulling me through. When the doctors gave me every negative report to, for me to literally not trust them, God, you were pulling me through. And today, that is all of our testimonies. Lord, it was you. Lord, it was you pulling me through. And so today, would you stand with me all over the place? Stand with me. Would you look at somebody and tell them, it was the Lord. It was the Lord. It was the Lord pulling you through. It was the Lord pulling us through. God is Lord over your predicaments. I want to speak to somebody today who came into church, didn't know how you were going to see your way through this week. I'm so thankful God sent this light-skinned, bald head preacher today to let you know he's with you in the predicament. And he will give you a testimony on the other side of the predicament. Today, I'm thankful. Many don't know that this has been a trying few years for me, Pastor Stone. I thought there was something specific that I was going to be doing, and it didn't happen. For a while, I was struggling, getting through day by day. I was in a predicament. But I'm here today to tell you, it wasn't anybody but God getting me through. And today, I want to let you know the God who has seen me through, who has gotten me through, is the same God who's going to see you through. Your predicament is not too big for God. Can I speak to this man of God here? Yo, yo, what's getting ready to be done in that operating room is not too big for God. Whatever it is, God turns predicaments into testimonies. Don't, don't let me give some people in here the mic. They will start telling and testifying of all God has done for them. And there is no secrets what God can do for what he's done for others. He'll do for you. So today, I know we already had altar call, but today I'm inviting you to the altar. Maybe you're standing in the need of prayer and you want someone to touch and agree with you on what it is that you're going through. Maybe you need to get to know this Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Mount Zion would love to get you to know that Jesus. Pastor Graham, Pastor Stone would love to be your pastors. Maybe, maybe you want to join the church. You need to be connected to a local body. Or again, just maybe, you need prayer. The altar is open even now. We'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. Don't be embarrassed. Don't worry. We have leaders here who will pray with you, pray for you with what it is that you're dealing with. But today, the Lord wants you to know your predicament won't keep you from what God has for you. God's plan is still intact for your life. What God spoke to you, he's going to do it. Today, I want you to be encouraged. Your predicament is just a setup for God's glory. Ah, yeah, man. I have come through. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, it was you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. It was you. Yeah, man. It was you who pulling me through. Yes, God. Pulling me through. Hallelujah. It was you. Lord, it was you pulling me through. Can we all sing that together? Let's make this declaration to God. Through all I had gone through. Yes. Lord, it was you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah, we bless your name today, God. Through all. Yes, Jesus. 
your people. Thank you, Jesus. For every single thing when that they are, they are dealing with. God, when I cry, that you're going to work it out for their good. When God, whatever like the negative report I is, Lord, die. you're a healer. God, whatever when operation needs to be done, you're the great physician. God, for every financial me. struggle, you're you Jehovah Jireh. Right. God, for everything that we're struggling, working our way through, you're a wonderful counselor. God, you'll open up doors for those, your people. God, I'm praying for every single person here under the sound of my voice. God, every single person who has some predicaments that they're in. God, give them the assurance that you're with them. Let them know Lord, that you're with them. You. And God, give them a testimony Lord, on the other side of this predicament. Work it out for their good. Give them something to share with others of what it you have done. You. Heal where only you can heal. Deliver. Set free. God, you. touch your people. In Jesus' name, Lord, God, we believe you for it. We thank you for what you're getting ready to do. We honor you for how you're going to do it. God, we know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. God, move in your people's lives. And we'll be, we'll be forever grateful. We'll give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said together, amen. Would you clap your hands if you believe God's going to do it? Come on, church, put your hands together and give him glory in advance for what eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. God's getting ready to do something in Mount Zion Church. God's getting ready to move. He's getting ready to provide and restore. God's going to do it. Hallelujah. He'll never walk out on you. No, never. No, never. He'll never walk out on you. Anybody believe it? No, never. Hallelujah. No, never. Oh, Lord. He'll never walk out on you. No, never. No, never. Anybody believe? Come on, sing it, church. He'll never. He'll never walk out on you. No, never. No, never. No, never. Oh, he'll never walk out on you. He'll never walk out on you. No, never. No, never. It Was you pulling me through? Hey, what's up? Hallelujah. It was you, Lord. It was you pulling me through. Hallelujah. Everybody knows it was God yeah. pulling us through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Reverend Because you me. told us it doesn't matter what predicament we're in, God still can pull us through. And we praise God for that. Amen. As we prepare for communion, if anyone has not been served, we ask that you will raise your hand. All baptized believers are welcome to partake 
of the Lord's Supper, all baptized believers. And we are going to start by reading our church covenant. been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards its expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit. And if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ, and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and goodwill towards all men, to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to walk, watch over, to pray for, to exhort and stir up each other unto every good word and work, to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys and with tender sympathy 
bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure it without delay, and through life, amid evil report and good report, to seek to live to the glory of God, who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen? Our communion scripture this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 34, and I will be reading from the NRSV. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves, and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body, eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If you are hungry, eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for your condemnation. About the other things, I will give instructions when I come. The word of God for the people of God. Let the people say, Amen. On that night so many, many years ago, Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples. His heart was heavy because he knew he was about to leave them to go to Calvary to give his life for you and for me. But before he left, he said, I want to give you something to remember me by. So he instituted what some call the Last Supper, some call the Lord's Supper, and some call communion. He said, as often as you do this, you do it in remembrance of me. He didn't tell us how often, but he said, as often. Here at Mount Zion, we come together on the first Sunday of every month to remember what our Lord and Savior did for us. Let us pray. Lord God, we come thankful for the sacrifice that you have made for us. Lord, we ask that you will forgive us of any sin that we have committed. And then, Lord, restore to us the joy of your salvation. Lord, we thank you for this bread. We thank you for this juice. 
We recognize that they are symbolic. The bread symbolizes your body. The juice symbolizes your blood that you shed for us on Calvary's mountain. Lord, we pray that you will bless these elements as we partake of them. Lord, we ask that you will strengthen us, strengthen us spiritually, strengthen us physically, and strengthen us even emotionally. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we lift your name on high. Whatever you do, don't take your Holy Spirit away from us. And the people of God said, Amen. The bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us eat together. Scripture tells us that after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, gave it to his disciples. He said, this is my blood that is shed for you. Drink ye all of it. Scripture tells us that after supper, they sang a hymn and went to the Mount of Olives. I want to remind those of you that have not had the opportunity to give that uh, the tithe and offering box is sitting in the vestibule as you exit the center aisle. Brother Kevin is going to lead us in a hymn. Shake your neighbor's hand and have a blessed week. Always remember Jesus, Jesus. Always remember Jesus, Jesus. Always keep him on your mind. Christopher Graham and I serve here as a senior pastor at Mount Zion Woodline. We are a church where we're Bible-based, Christ-centered, a mission-minded, and a discipleship-driven church. Whether you're here in the sanctuary or watching home online, we hope and pray that you have an awesome, awesome worship experience. Again, welcome, and we hope that you have a great time here at the Mount. worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I am excited to inform you that effective immediately, Mount Zion Baptist Church will begin a policy where masks are optional. Our worship during the pandemic has changed and we praise God that as a country, we appear to be moving towards becoming an endemic. Therefore, we will be utilizing 
the modified policy set by the CDC. There are a few requirements that I need to share with you. First, if you are more comfortable wearing a mask, please continue to wear your mask. If you're not feeling well, please remain at home. You can watch us on Facebook, YouTube, or dial in. Tides and offering will continue to be collected as you are entering and are leaving the church. If you do not have envelopes, there will be envelopes available in the vestibule as well as in the back of the pews. Please feel free to fellowship with each other. Now, if you happen to test positive for COVID, please call the church so we can assist with contact tracing. Church, with God's help, we can remain open without masks. We're looking forward to seeing your smiling faces again. We're located at 10180 Woodlawn Boulevard in beautiful Woodlawn, where the pastor is the Reverend Christopher R. Graham. Welcome to Reverend Keith D. Turner Jr., the guest preacher for this morning. A special church meeting will be held on May 9th at 7 p.m. That's when members will be able to vote on who they want to serve on the Deacon Selection Committee. Mark your calendar. Remember, Sunday, May 14th is Mother's Day. May 20th from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m., you can bring your documents to the Shred event. Thanks to the senior ushers of Mount Zion, the annual salad hour will be held on May 21st, right after the morning service. That's May 21st. Four salads of your choice. Vacation Bible School is coming up. A Vacation Bible School meeting is set for May 16th at 6.30 p.m. here at Mount Zion. Vacation Bible School is June 19th through June 22nd. The theme is Leading Out Loud, and there will be classes for children, teens, and adults. May 20th is Volunteer Day at Matthew 25 Ministries from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. You can volunteer every month at Matthew 25. Several members have birthdays this month. Please say happy birthday to Delinda Patton, May 4th. Diane Favors, her birthday is May 6th. Also coming up in May, a birthday celebration for Gwen Jubilee Womack on May 10th. Happy birthday to her. Also to Reverend Pat Stone. Her birthday is May 17th. And Kenneth Roberts has a birthday on May 30th. Happy birthday. Pastor Graham's preaching schedule for May he will be preaching May 14th, May 21st, and May 28th. This is just a friendly reminder, food and drink are not allowed in the sanctuary. Do you have family members, deceased family members, who served in the military? If so, as part of a Memorial Day service, the military ministry would like you to send their name to the office. A free three-day summer camp, that's free, will be held this summer at Camp Kirkwood. It's sponsored by the American Baptist Churches of Ohio. If you'd like more information, email the email address on the screen or call the church office. 